so I, I, we are going to look at uh, closed loop systems. So when you talk about the closed loop system, just unlike uh, the control, the, the, the open loop uh, control system, uh, the closed loop is one in which the control action uh, depends also on the output or the desired results. So the, in the other case, the, the control action was only dependent on the input. But in this case, both the input and output uh, always determine uh, the, the, the output. So the, we cannot represent it uh, by use of a block diagram whereby we can talk about a block diagram of control system. So here, we can have that. Yeah, that is the comparator. We can have that. We can have that. So we can talk about this one as the closed loop. So we can talk about that, whereby this one is the sensing. Uh, we can talk of this one as sensing uh, and amplifying elements. So this is sensing and amplifying elements. Then the other one, you can talk about this one as the actuator. And then from there, we can talk about the control variable output C. Controlled variable output C. So we can talk about the control variable output C. Then of course, from there, for us, uh, for it to depend on that, then the, here we have input command. Input command. And the input command, we always refer to it as uh, input R. Usually refer to it as R. Uh, and then here we have the, the error. This is the comparator. So error detector or the comparator. You can call that one error detector. Or it is the comparator. And then at the end of it here, we have actuating. The difference is the error. And then the, what is at the output is fed back by use of a feedback path, and it is fed back to the comparator. So here we have a feedback path. So here we have feedback path, and the feedback path is going to ensure that uh, uh, whatever is at the output is compared with the input in order to have the error that is going to be used in uh, regulating that particular system. So in this case, you'll find that the controlled signal is fed back and compared with the reference input and an actuating signal that is proportional to the difference of the input and the output is sent in order to correct the error. So that is uh, what we refer to as the uh, closed loop control system, whereby now, in this case, we also include the feedback that is going to compare the difference between C and R, and that difference is what is going to be uh, uh, gotten into in, inside the error detector, and then we get the error that is going to be used in order to amplify, the, the, the error will be amplified in, to ensure that, that the, 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 the difference between the input command and the control variable is as small as possible, and, it is at, and, and in that case, it is always uh, used in order to regulate that. So this one can also be a regulatory system. So what are the, some of the advantages of uh, closed loop uh, control system? Closed loop system. So when you talk about the closed loop system, then we can talk about the advantages of closed loop system. Advantages of closed loop system. Advantages of closed loop system. Advantages. So we can talk of the advantages of closed loop system. So the advantages of closed loop system, one of them is fast response. So we can talk of the fast response. The fast response. So the fast response here is, uh, is because whenever there is a, a, a disturbance, then it, will, it, it has got the element of corrective mechanism. And that one will always be initiated at the feedback path in order to bring about the corrective action. The other one we can talk about is the reduced effect of disturbance. Reduced effect of disturbance. Reduced effect of disturbance. So when you talk about the reduced effect of disturbance, again, that one is all to do with the uh, feedback path, whereby it is going to ensure that whenever even the output, uh, whenever, if the output is so much uh, far away from what is desired, then we are able to bring it back 
by use of the corrective path, comparing the input command with the controlled variable. The other advantage is that it can be accurate. So we can talk of it as accurate. It is accurate in that the aspect of corrective mechanism also comes to that. Again, also we can talk about it has got the wide bandwidth, wide bandwidth. Eh? The range of response is wider uh, as compared to open loop. So what are some of the disadvantages? Disadvantages of closed loop disadvantages of, clo of closed loop. One of them is that it is relatively complex. It is relatively complex. It is relatively complex. So the additional uh, circuitry of the feedback path will make it to a little bit com co complex. And again, will also make it to be uh, a little bit expensive. So we can also talk of it as a little bit expensive compared to uh, the open loop. Uh, control system. And again, because of comparing the differences all now and then, it is uh, always potentially, unst uh, potentially unstable under faulty conditions. So we can talk of it as potentially unstable under faulty conditions. It is potentially unstable under faulty Condition. So those ones are the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, closed loop. So what are some of the examples of the closed loop uh, control system? We can talk about the domestic central heating, uh, whereby the input that is required is the temperature and the output is the actual temperature. And in this case, the domestic central heating is uh, whereby the thermostat is always used to ensure that uh, uh, the output is adjusted to take into the account uh, of changes and the conditions so as to maintain a constant temperature. Another uh, example that we can talk about is the automatic control what, uh, of water level uh, in uh, a tank. Or maybe you can also talk about uh, the, oh, in a tank, maybe the one that is always there in, uh, in, in the toilet, whereby after you have used the toilet, uh, the water enters, and then there is the floater. Then the floater, after some time when it reaches a certain level, the floater will ensure that there is no more water that enters that. So that one can be a very, very uh, good example. So what are some of the areas of application of control uh, of closed loop control system? Some of the areas of application of closed loop control system, we can just mention them. One of them is the air, aircraft. Uh, control system, that is the use of the sensors in order to stabilize the aircraft and autopiloting. We can also talk about the aircraft landing uh, or the, the automatic landing of the aircraft. And uh, this one, we, in this case, we talk about the desired attitude and the velocity of the aircraft. is always compared from the ground and transmitted as control signals uh, to the aircraft. You can also talk of the missile control, the com uh, which combines both the uh, aircraft control system as well as uh, the automatic landing. Uh, we can also talk of the radar and gun control uh, whereby the position control systems with particular problems uh, as fast positioning and good regulation uh, will work well against the wind disturbance. We can also talk about the machine tool control and this one usually in, include numerical control of the position or the velocity of a cutter drill where, for, whereby the numerical input code position are always determined by use of the coordinates and the holes are processed onto a magnetic or paper tape and the table is positioned accordingly. Also, we can talk about the remote position control. We, and this one is in radar systems and also nuclear systems that are extensively used in positioning. The other one can be the process control, like for example, you can talk of the chemical industries. So those are some of the areas whereby uh, the closed loop control system are applied. So before we can go, go to other things, we can look at some of the terminologies that are always used in control system. So we can talk about the terminology uh, that are used. We can talk of the terminology and this one, we can do it by looking at, uh, we can draw a block diagram and then we define them from the block diagram. So in that case, we can have our R there. Then we have the comparator here. 
then we have this block, another block, then in this case we can have a disturbance, immune, then we have an output. So in this case we can talk of this one as R, then here we can talk of this one as E, this one is the error detector, can talk of that one as error detector, then the first one we can call it G1, can call that one G2, then uh, between G1 and G2 we can talk of RM, whereby now we have M, then we have C as the output, and then it goes back to that, whereby now we are going to have, we can have uh, H. We can have H at the, on the feedback path, and then those ones are some of the uh, terms uh, that I want us uh, to uh, describe. So we are going to talk about these particular uh, uh, terms, and then that one uh, will mark the end of the introduction to control system. So the first term that uh, we need to define is what we refer to as the feedback control system. Number one, feedback control system. Feedback control system. So when you talk about the feedback control system, uh, then with this one we can define it as uh, that one which tends to maintain a prescribed relationship uh, of a one system variable to another by comparing the functions of this variable and using the difference as a means of control. So it is what will ensure that uh, uh, the, 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 there is a relationship that is maintained, uh, uh, the prescribed relationship, uh, uh, and this one is from one system uh, to another, and it compares these functions, uh, or the functions of these variables. It compares the functions of the variables, and it uses uh, the difference as a means of control. So that one happens at this point, whereby this one is now the feedback control system. That one forms the feedback path, and it ensures that there is that comparison taking place at that particular point. The other one, we can talk about the reference input R. Reference input R. The reference input R. So when you talk about the reference input R, then we are simply talking about a signal uh, that is produced as a standard comparison uh, for a feedback control system. And a con a, when you talk of a constant R, then it is always referred to as the set point. When maybe we can, we need to make make a make a, a control system. Maybe we talk about regulatory system. We want to regulate the control the, the temperature of a room to be maybe 30 degrees or maybe to be 25 degrees Celsius, then in that case, that 25 degrees is our R. It is that set point. If it is constant, if that is what is supposed to be maintained, then that is now what we call a constant value of R, is what we refer to as a set point. And we've said that R, R is just a signal that is produced as a standard comparison or for the control uh, for, for a feedback control system. The third one that we can talk about is uh, what we refer to as the primary feedback signal B. Primary feedback signal B. So that is another one that we can talk about. And this one is just a function of the control variable which is compared with the reference input variable uh, in order to obtain the actuating signal E. So the primary feedback, uh, the primary feedback B is here. So it is what that function that comes from the output that is compared with R in order to have uh, that actuating signal E. The fourth one, we can talk about actuating signal E. Actuating signal E. So when you talk about the actuating signal E, then it is the reference input R minus the primary feedback signal B. So in this case, E is simply R minus B is what will give you E. So that is what will give you E. That is what we refer to as the actuating signal E. The other one that uh, we can talk about is the control element G1. Control elements 
G1. So when you talk about the control elements G1, then this one usually comprise uh, the portion of the feedback control system, which is required to produce the manipulated variable M from the actuating signal. So it is just that uh, particular portion of the feedback control system that is generally required in order to produce the manipulated variable M uh, from the actuating signal. Then we talk about the sixth one, that is uh, what we refer to as the manipulated variable M. Manipulated variable M manipulated variable m so when you talk about the manipulated variable m then this is basically the quantity or the condition which the controller applies to the control system it is just the quantity uh, or condition which the controller applies to the control system and this is what we refer to as the manipulated variable m then we have the controlled system or, or we call we can call it plant or g2 controlled system and we can call it plant or just g2 so when you talk of that then we, this is the body it is the process or even the plant uh, a particular quantity or the condition which is to be controlled so this is what we are meant to control and that is what we call the controlled system and then we can talk about the disturbance mu number uh, eight uh, that is here so here is what we call disturbance. So we can talk of disturbance. That is mu. And the disturbance is just any, any signal other than the input R that affect the value of the control variable. As long as you have any other signal, like in the case of firing a gun, uh, those other signals like uh, the wind, or the resistance uh, to the flow or, or to the movement of the bullet is what can now bring about what we call the disturbance. So it is simply any other uh, signal other than R that tends uh, uh, to affect the value of the controlled variable. Then we can talk about another one which uh, we can talk about as the controlled variable C. Controlled variable c controlled variable c so when you talk about the control variable c then this is just the quantity or condition or, or condition of the controlled system which is directly measured and controlled so it's simply uh, the quantity or condition of the control system which is directly measured and controlled then number 10 Another term, that, uh, another terminology that you can also talk about is the feedback element H. Feedback element H. So when you talk about the feedback element H, then it, is just, uh, it just comprises the portion of the feedback control system which establishes the relation uh, between the primary feedback and the controlled variable C. So it is that which, because in most cases, uh, in, in, in most cases when you talk about the control system, there is always a difference in what is at the input. You will find that the input can be a physical quantity physical quantity while the output there is a sensor here that is going to convert this one into voltage so that we have the output as an electrical signal so for us to compare what is at the output and what is at the input you'll find that the output will be in terms of voltages or electrical signals and then the the, the, the input is a, is a physical quantity so there is a reason whereby you have to convert this into the same dimension and the same level as what is at the input in order for you to, 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 to compare the two. So in this case, you usually have some sort of transducer that is going to convert that so that the comparison can be done uh, at the same level and they must be of the same dimension. So you'll find that uh, the feedback element H is just comprising of the portion of the feedback control system which will establish the relation between the primary feedback and the control variable C in order to compare the two. The other one that we can talk about is the forward path. Forward path. The forward path. So when you talk about the forward path, then this is the, just the transmission path 
the transmission path uh, from the actuating signal E to the control variable C. So in actual sense, what we are talking about as the forward path is that. So it, uh, it is from the actuating signal E to the output C. So that is what we refer to as the forward path, or we can refer to it as the controlled variable C. Then we can talk about, lastly, we can talk about the second or the other one, which is the feedback path. Feedback path. Feedback path. And when you talk about the feedback path, then this is just a transmission path uh, from the controlled variable. It's just the transmission path from the control variable C to the primary feedback E. So uh, we can have that. So this one is uh, what we refer to the uh, primary feedback B. So in that case, this is what we refer to as the feedback path. So that is the feedback path in, I hope it is in blue. That is what we call feedback. So that is what we refer to as the feedback part. So that is all as far as uh, introduction uh, to control system is concerned. Uh, so in uh, our next uh, discussion, we'll be looking at uh, the block diagram. So I ask you to subscribe so that whenever we look at that uh, uh, topic on uh, block diagrams, you will be able to uh, follow. Otherwise, as far as uh, the introduction uh, to control system is concerned, we are going to reach that at that point. So thank you.